Hi everyone, and welcome to Insight. Today's video is going to be another in a series of videos that I'm going to make on the history of photography. And today's subject is a very interesting photographer by the name of Henry Peach Robinson, who lived between 1830 and 1901. Robinson was an early photographer, clearly, and his images drew a lot of inspiration from the painting traditions and aesthetics of his time. In fact, Robinson was in what was known as the pictorialist tradition. Now, I'm going to do a video later on about the pictorialist movement that is going to go into more detail, but suffice it to say that the pictorialists basically believed that photography, like painting, was about creating an image rather than recording it, creating the image rather than recording it. And as a pictorialist, Robinson was very successful. In his photographic studio, he made photographs that imitated the themes and compositions of what was known as genre paintings. Genre paintings were pictorial representations of scenes and events from everyday life. So things like parties, uh, domestic settings, people in markets, people in bars having fun in scenes, really any event from daily life. So in many ways, the genre painters were documenting the day-to-day -day realities of their time. One of the technical things that set Robinson apart from other photographers was the fact that his images were created by combining separate negatives into a composite picture. We do this today all the time using Photoshop, but of course there was no Photoshop with which he could do this. So Robinson had to go about it the hard way. And what he did was use a process known as combination printing. Robinson learned about combination printing from his friend Oscar Reichlander. The technique was very intricate and involved a number of processes and was quite difficult to, to master because you basically in the end had to take negatives and expose these negatives, uh, multiple negatives, on the same paper. Reichlander developed the technique but Robinson refined it to a level that was, uh, up until that time, unheard of. Here are a number of examples of Robinson's images that reflect his aesthetic vision and his technique. So besides his extensive work as a photographer, Robinson was also actively involved in the many theoretical debates that was going on at the time about photography. And these debates are very reminiscent of the kinds of debates that we're still having today. Basically, the kinds of things that they would discuss would be things like how truthful is an image, does an image or a photograph capture what is out there, or is it a work of art? So these are issues that you know they were talking about. They also talked about whether or not it was uh, reasonable to manipulate an image after it was photographed. So again, this is the kind of stuff that we talk about today, and with all the digital imagery that we have, this is this is something that's uh, uh, appropriate to discuss. Anyway, Robinson held the belief that photography is an art form and that it was equal to painting and sculpture. And eventually he wrote a book about this because not everybody agreed with him. The 
people who are very scientifically minded basically said, no, no, photography is not an art form at all. It's just a, a, a technology that is able to document what's out there in the world. Um, but Robinson didn't really believe this. And, you know, his uh, philosophical outlook was, was very different from the scientific outlook. In any event, eventually he wrote a book about his philosophy regarding uh, photography, and it had a very ponderous name. It was called Pictorial Effects in Photography, being hints on composition and chiaroscuro for photographers. So a real mouthful. But what he talked about in the book was very, very relevant and very interesting and relevant to us today. Basically, in the book, he encouraged photographers to be consciously aware of things like composition, contrast, color. And he also uh, argued that you know, photographers need to frame things. You know, they don't just go out there and take a picture of what they see. They, they have to frame things, and sometimes they even have to stage things. They have to use their imagination, right? And when they're using their imagination, they have to create an environment where they will be able to capture an interesting and engaging image. So, in many ways, Robinson saw photographers in the same way as he saw painters. He argued that the work that photographers did and the way that they worked was very similar to the way painters would work, right? So painters are also going to be aware of such things as composition and uh, uh, of, of, of light and color and all these things when they're painting an image. And he basically said uh, photographers need to, to do the same. So here's a quotation from Robinson which basically captures this uh, photographic aesthetic. It is only by loving nature and going to her for everything that good work can be done. But then we must look to her for the materials for pictures, not for pictures themselves. It is nature filtered through the mind and fingers of the artist that produces art. And the quality of the pictures depends on the fineness of that filter. So. Robinson was very, very much an artist at heart, but an artist who used this new technology known as photography. So as Robinson produced more and more photographs, some of the images that he created were very controversial. And one of the most controversial images that he uh, made was called Fading Away. This photograph basically depicts a young girl who is dying of consumption. Today, uh, we would know this as uh, tuberculosis. And she's surrounded by her grieving, mourning family. They're watching her die. And as with all of his images, this photograph was very heavily rendered and stylized. In fact, he set up the, the story, the narrative, in his studio. And all the people in the photograph are actually actors. So this is not reality. This is um, basically a, a construction. It's not uh, something that is actually going on. But a lot of people thought that what he was photographing there was reality. This was something that was in fact very, very real. They didn't realize that he just kind of made it up. And the image was very stylized and it was made up of six or five, five or six separate negatives. And as I said, many people were very offended by the photograph and they argued that, you know, the subject matter was just too private and delicate to be explored through such a realistic medium as uh, photography. So this was very controversial, but interestingly, as with many controversies, it actually made Robinson even more popular and famous and uh, eventually became one of the most recognized photographers in all of England. And his fame increased even more when his photograph fading away was purchased by Queen Victoria in the early 1860s. So why are we talking about Robinson? Well, the reason is that he is a photographer who really anticipates the work uh, of modern photographers. And I don't, I don't think it would be false or unreasonable to go as far as to say that his ideas and his photographs really explore questions about the nature of reality and what our perception of it is. People thought that his images were real, 
that the image fading away was of something that was actually going on. They, they didn't realize that, uh, you know, photography can manipulate our perceptions and, and can manipulate reality in, in, a, in a way that can move us and create a, a visceral response in us. And, and that was exactly what Robinson wanted to do. He wanted people to think that the images were real, but he also wanted to capture a story of something that was going on. Uh, he wanted to capture something beautiful. And, and that was his main goal. So in the final analysis, I would say that Robinson's images and his philosophical outlook are about the art of creating something beautiful and ultimately about elevating the ordinary and the mundane into something that is extraordinary, something that people can appreciate and find moving and insightful. Here, here is uh, what he has to say about it in his own words. Any dodge, trick, and conjuration of any kind is open to the photographer's use. It is his imperative duty to avoid the mean, the base, and the ugly, and to aim to elevate his subject, and to correct the unpicturesque. A great deal can be done, and very beautiful pictures made by a mixture of the real and the artificial in a picture. Thanks again for listening. Don't hesitate to subscribe. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.